That was the issue David Cameron warned his party to stop banging on about when he was elected as leader a decade ago. But the debate about Europe has only gathered steam. After failing to reach a deal last week in Brussels, the Prime Minister is gearing up for yet more negotiations with EU leaders in February. But it's reported almost half of all Conservative MPs have already joined the Eurosceptic group Conservatives for Britain. Well, I'm joined now by the organisation's co-chair, Steve Baker. And a very good morning to you, Mr Baker. I want to ask you, first of all, for a direct response. The former Chancellor, uh, Ken Clark on this programme uh, about an hour ago, um, said, well, Eurosceptics, a euphemism for uh, right-wing nationalists. Well, I was very disappointed to hear him say that because just a few moments before he said, I think we should treat one another with respect. Well, I agree we should treat one another with respect. And I think he has noble reasons for thinking we should be in the EU at all costs. But I consider myself a liberal internationalist of the old kind. I want to live in a democracy. And as the Prime Minister said, the EU is too bossy and too undemocratic. So I hear what he says. I think he's wrong. And I think we need to we need to play the issues, not the people, if we're going to stick together. OK, so to the Prime Minister in Brussels last week. Uh, I mean, you kind of think, I guess, don't you, that, that, that he got what he was going to get. Wasn't asking for very much in your book and still didn't even get that. He was asking for what Lord Lawson said was inconsequential and indeed he has got inconsequential commitments. I mean, look at the benefits position. We've been told that we might be allowed to go in a position of supplication after the damage has been done to withdraw benefits which the OBR has told us would make not much difference to migration. This is not what colleagues are looking for. They'd like to be able to treat people equally, whether they're f from outside the EU or within it. Uh, and, and that means having British migration policy made in Britain for whoever is outside the UK. So even if he got the benefits cap, and it's, it's a big if, isn't it? But even if he got that, you're saying that's not enough? Well, he won't get the benefits cap, and it isn't enough. But even if he did? Even if he did, it wouldn't be enough. No, we think British migration policy should be made in Britain, and people are very clear about it. When discrimination is mentioned in this context, you have to remember that migration policy is being made on the basis of EU citizenship, which came in under Maastricht, and which I don't think the British public have ever really warmed to. We think of ourselves as British citizens. Now, this isn't about how nice people are. We all love Europe. I think most Conservatives have a very warm heart for, for Europe. This is the issue about having consent for the levels of migration that we have and our public services being able to absorb the people who come. So would you endorse uh, the words in terms of those negotiations, and we know they're going to go on now, the Prime Minister hoping to wrap them up in February. Liam Fox, also a member of uh, your grouping, talking about the Prime Minister parading about Europe with a political begging bowl. It's strong language, but I'm afraid it is true. I mean, look at other issues like the tampon tax. We have to get, go in a position of supplication or with a political begging bowl asking to be allowed to do things which really a sovereign parliament should be able to just take care of. So I'm afraid Liam Fox is right, but this is what the position that the EU will put any British Prime Minister in. It's not about David Cameron. It's that if we're in the European Union, any British Prime Minister will find themselves in a position where they can't even ask Parliament to pass the laws which they know our country needs. And that's why I think we should leave. But people would say, and some people are saying to you, you know, would you at least let the negotiations continue to their conclusion before you make up your mind? This issue uh, was raised again, floated again, perhaps seemed to have gone away for a bit, of the emergency break on EU migration. Of course, that would be operated from, from Brussels. They decide when and how it operated. Yeah. But nevertheless, that perhaps for a period of time would, would stop large numbers of EU nationals coming to the UK. Well, people have several times said we've been a bit premature, and I would have loved to have waited till the end. But let's remember that when we were first elected, we thought there was an outside possibility the referendum might have been held by now. Mm. So we had to come out of the blocks quickly. We had to make sure we started building a campaign, which we've successfully done. But creating the impression we'd have a quick referendum had the consequence that those of us with strong views had to come out of the blocks quickly. So, so that's why we, we, we've moved fast. It became evident very early that the Prime Minister wasn't going to ask to give Parliament a veto over EU law, for example. That happened on the 7th of June when the Foreign Secretary said having a veto was tantamount to exit. Well, people continue to flirt with it. Boris Johnson wrote an article saying Parliament should have a veto. But... This is the truth. Conservatives are in a great battle between gut instinct, their heart, which tells them they love Europe, and their pragmatic head, which tries to resolve the mess. In the end, I think most Conservatives will wish to leave. Well, I wanted to ask you in the, in the introduction uh, I gave there about your assessment of the, the strength of support that your group has within the party. And let, you know, let's start with Boris Johnson there. He's quoted this morning as saying he thinks the Prime Minister should be more robust with his European partners. 
Well, I think it's fair to say we would like the Prime Minister to be more robust because we're very clear that most of us want to end the supremacy of EU law and make British migration policy I in London and so on. But we are where we are. The Prime Minister's in a position where he's being pragmatic and wishes to keep us in a reformed EU. Well, you can see which way he is leaning. He'd like to keep us in. I think Sir John Major let the cat out of the bag this morning mm. on the Mar show. It seems clear to me that what the establishment would like is for the public to vote to remain in, and then they'll finesse all the details later. This is never going to work. As even John Major said this morning, with subsidiarity, it didn't work before, and his argument was, well, this time we'll get it right. Look at history. Are you going to trust politicians' promises on this issue? Or are you going to vote to leave and force politicians to come back with the right deal that does end these problems, which even those in favour okay. of staying in typically recognise? And this from a politician. But what is your assessment within the Conservative Party of your level, your views level of support? I think that over half the Conservative Party is strongly leaning to leave. There are 150 colleagues signed up to the Conservatives for Britain mailing list. There's a, another 15 and we'll have over half the party. And I think well, some of them will just be keeping an eye on things. Some will be just keeping an eye and there's a small number, as I've, as I've said. I think there's at least three who are simply keeping an eye, but that's fine. But what I've seen over the last few weeks is that colleagues are substantially hardening up. Mm. They're seeing the way we're conducting ourselves, which is to play the issues, not the, not the person of the Prime Minister. And they're hardening up and saying this deal just isn't And how fair. deeply does your support penetrate into the Cabinet? I'm not going to speculate on any particular member of the Cabinet, but people's views... Well, you must have had conversations with them. Well, people's views are well known. There are several year sceptics in the Cabinet who've said in the past, for example, that they would vote to leave if the question was tomorrow. And I think we're now approaching a point that the question tomorrow will be on substantially the same basis as it would have been then. So if those members of the Cabinet are not given freedom to speak their minds, well, there's going to be something of a pantomime for several months. So I would like the Prime Minister to give them freedom to, to campaign as soon as possible. Right, well, let, let's just be explicit about that then. So you're saying to the Prime Minister, when you come back with whatever agreement you've been able to get, you say to your Cabinet, you're free. You're I, free to vote, where, uh, to campaign and vote wherever you like. I think our party and our country and the quality of debate would be best served by full freedom for the Cabinet on this issue. So what do you think will happen if that's not given? I think it's inevitable that some members of the Cabinet will feel they have to resign. If they're browbeaten into supporting a deal, which honestly is this flimsy, I, I think there are problems ahead. But I hope there'll be no need for resignations, because I hope the Prime Minister will give them freedom to speak up on an issue which many of them have held uh, strong views on for many years. Mm. And would you have high hopes of uh, capturing one of them to uh, actually lead your campaign? You could do it with a really high-profile figure. It's not a question of capturing them. You know, I've had many colleagues, uh, conversations with colleagues, I feel sure that there will be a place for any colleague who wishes to have a, a strong public profile on this issue. So what, you think you could get someone like Boris Johnson, Theresa May, Ian Duncan Smith, someone like that to I, lead your campaign to be the public face? I, I'm not going to speculate on any particular member of the government, but if you look at the Vice Presidents of Conservatives for Britain, and indeed Lord Lawson, our President, it's quite clear that there are a good number of previous members of the Cabinet who've joined us already in a public role, and I'm sure that if anyone else felt they needed to leave the Cabinet, we would accommodate them very easily. I'm sure you would. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Most welcome. Very good to talk to you. Steve Baker.